Hello, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, The Benefits of Using an Integrated Solution for Your Mobile Strategy. My name is Corey Hamlet from 451 Research, and I'll be your moderator today. Presenting on today's webinar first will be Chris Marsh, 451 Research Director for Enterprise Mobility. Following Chris will be Emil Stoichev, Product Manager of Progress Digital Factory for Mobile at Progress. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. After the two presentations, we will have a brief Q&A period. To submit a question, just click on the question button within the webinar interface. We will try to get to as many questions as possible, but if we run out of time, someone will get back to you with an answer after the webinar. In addition, a copy of the presentation will be made available to all attendees. We also ask that you provide us with any feedback that you may have from today's presentation. Okay, with that, let's get started. Chris, take it away. Great. Thanks, uh, Corey, uh, for the introduction, and welcome, everybody, to the webcast. Uh, really happy to, to be here this afternoon um, to share some perspectives on, you know, mobile in the enterprise, uh, mobile apps and mobile app strategies, um, the kind of things that companies should be looking for and looking to do uh, to become more mature in their mobile application strategies. Um, so I'm going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, first of all, talking a bit about the state of play in mobile, um, uh, you know, where companies are investing, what they're doing, uh, sort of pain points, um, areas of priority. Uh, and then I'll be sort of going through, you know, what are some of the kind of architectural approaches that companies can be thinking about to really go from, I think, where most companies are at the moment, which is this kind of very opportunistic phase, to something uh, more strategic and business impactful. So um, as you can see on this slide, I'm, I'm going to be kicking off uh, with that first point, just sharing some statistics from our surveys uh, here in 451. We actually do a lot of um, survey work amongst uh, businesses where we go out regularly. We've been doing this for quite a number of years. We do it on a quarterly basis and we ask a bunch of questions to IT and line of business decision makers where they have responsibility for mobile uh, technology decisions. Uh, and, you know, we ask them what they're doing, where they're investing, um, you know, pain points, obstacles, aspirations, and all of this kind of thing. So I'm just going to share some of those uh, statistics to, to kind of kick off and, and hopefully give uh, a kind of bigger picture, if you like. Um, so, you know, taken in aggregate, I think, you know, what we've seen over the past couple of years is, is a positive picture. You know, it's companies investing more. 60% um, of companies um, say they're going to be increasing their budget specifically for mobility, mobile projects, a third significantly increasing that budget over the next 12 months. Uh, we see a quarter of firms increasing their dedicated mobile headcounts by over 50%, so actually bringing in new um, human resource, you know, new, new skills around uh, mobility. Uh, three quarters of companies with B2E apps, so employee mobile apps, uh, already say they're using some kind of analytics to track usage and measure the experience. And on the B2C side, um, almost 60% saying that, uh, you know, they're using some kind of A-B testing to, uh, you know, hone and finally tune their B2C apps before they are uh, distributed or, or reiterated and re-released. So, you know, good amount of interest, good amount of activity. Uh, we're seeing a gradual sort of ups, upswing, if you like, across these uh, different metrics and others that we gather in the surveys over the past uh, few years. Uh, but I guess the question we need to ask is, you know, wh where is all of this going and what's the kind of, um, you know, what's the kind of bigger picture as to how companies should be thinking about mobility? I think for, you know, enterprises, um, the promise really is that mobility should be helping you free the data that's traditionally been locked up in your kind of back end applications and systems and databases and repositories, getting it out to your mobile users, but really critically enriching that data with the context of the mobile user and through the interaction the mobile user is having with that application, you know, fundamentally to create better applications. So, you know, whether that's driving greater productivity, whether it's creating more engaging experiences for, you know, consumers and customers. Um, the challenge, though, on the supply side technology, I think, is to, um, you know, help businesses turn that data into a valuable digital inventory, if you like. Um, so it's not just about 
you know, getting data that's previously been locked up in these kind of pre-mobile legacy backend infrastructures out to mobile uh, applications. Uh, but really, I think the bigger picture going forward is companies understanding how to really continually add value to that data as it flows in and out of applications and across the infrastructure and back to, you know, those backend resources um, in a way that continuously adds value to the user going forward. So, you know, in terms of the kind of underlying technology, we need to think about, and I'll, I'll go on to talk about some of this in, in a bit more detail in subsequent slides, um, but just to kind of presage that, you know, we need to think about how to reduce the latency of data as it passes in and out of apps, how to understand it through analytics, how to recycle it across that infrastructure in, you know, continuously kind of iterated mobile experiences. And, and all of this really has traditionally been very challenging to do where companies are having to, you know, patch together lots of um, potentially kind of siloed third party technologies. So, you know, one of the things obviously we'll be doing in this presentation is talking to, um, you know, some of the opportunities around looking at, you know, more integrated technologies as the foundation for a mobile app strategy going forward. So um, just kind of before we get into some of the, you know, what we should be looking for, I just thought it'd be useful to share a little bit more context in terms of where I think we are and what some of the challenges are, because that helps set the scene in terms of what, what you should be looking for. Um, so again, sharing a bit more survey data here, this is from um, the same surveys I referenced on the previous slide, uh, just to kind of explain what you're looking at. The top darker blue line is the uh, total mobile proportion of the overall workforce, if you like. So we define a mobile worker as anyone who spends 20% or more of their time away from their primary workspace on an average week. Um, and, you know, non-mobile workers, obviously anyone who spends less than that. Um, and the lighter blue line is the amount of time that everybody else, i.e. non-mobile workers, spend doing work in mobile environments. Uh, and as you can see, you know, with the odd fluctuation here over the sort of quarterly survey um, uh, results, there isn't actually that much change in either uh, metric here. So, um, you know, we have, you know, two thirds of employees who say they use a smartphone for work, almost half of employees who say they do some kind of work on their smartphone on a daily basis, whether that's, you know, their own phone or, or one provision to them by their employer. Um, yet 60% of employees don't have any mobile apps provided to them. And that includes, you know, basic sort of PIM style mobile productivity apps. So, you know, by far the majority on, you know, don't have any sort of apps provided to them, if you like, by their employer. And a quarter of all um, employees say they are, you know, very concerned about the privacy of their own, you know, content data information on devices that they own. So if they are sort of obliged to take on some kind of MDM service on their device, for example, you know, significant levels of concern about employers either intentionally or accidentally wiping information or having access to things that maybe you don't want your employer to see. So, you know, really the point of this slide is that, you know, this massive cascading of devices that we've seen into employees' hands hasn't in any way really translated into direct productivity gains. I think one of the... Um, issues uh, here is that um, you know mobile development is fundamentally different from uh, what came uh, before um, so you know just highlighting here some challenges that are specific to uh, to mobile um, I think first of all you know it places new pressures on workloads we actually have some interesting data in our voice of the enterprise surveys which is another actually separate survey we do here in 451 research that points to only around 10% of companies doing sort of policy-based automation and orchestration of their application workloads. Um, that's not mobile specific, but I think it does point to, you know, the challenge of introducing greater automation. And that's really only made more complicated with mobile, certainly in terms of, you know, consumer facing mobile apps, um, really significant pressures on delivering availability and stability against often very unpredictable demand. Um, and, you know, the imperative to, reduce the latency of data as it passes in and out of apps um, uh, and, and picking up user users context as it goes. So, you know, mobile certainly places new pressures on managing workloads. That's something we, we obviously have to think about. 
Um, it also has specific requirements in terms of just getting apps out the door, whether it's you know new types of certification, whether it's how to manage key stores, whether it's testing on emulators and simulators, potentially actual mobile devices, um, how you handle app versioning, there's a whole host of things which you know is is definitively different with mobile than uh, sort of web development, I, I guess if you like, that, that sort of preceded it. Um, and then, you know, technologies and methods mediating roles across the software development lifecycle, I think, are also evolving uh, with, you know, particular pressure from the advent of mobility. So, you know, we see things like testing becoming more of a definitive developer concern. We see things like collaboration needing to be much more concurrent across certainly the early stages of the life cycle. Um, and across business and technical stakeholders than this, you know, waterfall sequential approach that's traditionally marked uh, sort of web development. Um, and, you know, the, the very definition of developer in and of itself is, is expanding to include maybe less pure techie roles, the kind of citizen developer or however you might want to encapsulate that kind of um, less technically able, but still, you know, somebody who uh, may be, uh, has skills that can help um, in the life cycle process. And then, you know, I guess what a lot of this is building to and a subject of what we'll be addressing in subsequent slides in the presentation is that the toolkit here can actually be very complex if you make it. Um, it can also be much more straightforward if you make it. It depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, but certainly we still see quite a fragmented landscape of technologies. And again, to, to one of my earlier points, difficult, I think, for enterprises when they're having to patch a lot of these technologies together using potentially multiple SDKs integrating services into the same application um, etc so um, you know certainly uh, challenges I guess in the real world what this boils down to is you know kind of what we're showing on this slide and this was taken from a custom survey that we did for a, a 451 client um, where we asked uh, actually IT developers, IT managers, and different lines of business personnel, you know, questions around how they were developing their apps, how they're doing the front end, the back end, the integration, how they were, de how they were deploying them. Um, really interesting set of results. And this was uh, maybe some of the most interesting data points coming from the question, which essentially was, you know, how much of your total sort of typical mobile app budget for a mobile app project do you spend on different tasks across the pre and post production life cycle? Um, and as you can see here, that biggest sort of blue cog on the bottom right, you know, approaching half of all a, a typical mobile app project budget spent on the initial pre production development. Now, um, you know, that, that's kind of crazy, really. Um, maybe not in the context of a sing singular app, but of course, you know, companies are looking at a broader set of use cases and, you know, portfolios of apps. I think ultimately we'll see, you know, tens, uh, potentially hundreds, if not more of mobile applications available to employees as we go forward and mobile technologies become, uh, you know, more widely adopted. So spending almost half of your budget up front just getting apps out the door is obviously not sustainable in that context. Um, I think much more time needs to be spent on, um, you know, getting a sort of minimum viable product out the door that, you know, you will have tested to have been, um, you know, suitable for release uh, in terms of your users' expectations, but something that you can then you know, integrate feedback in terms of usage and, you know, problems in performance potentially to then, you know, iterate the experience going forward. So really this needs to, to kind of flip the other way. And, and this, you know, is the result of the mismatch that we've seen in a lot of technologies um, and between those technologies and, you know, lifecycle workflows and the requirement uh, to be very agile when it comes to to mobile. So, you know, ch challenges for sure. Uh, positive news, though, I think, in that we are seeing, um, you know, interesting sort of changes uh, that we're beginning to see sort of come through nuanced in our survey results in terms of where companies are investing and where they're prioritizing their investment in mobile projects. So we've asked this question for, for actually a lot of years. So we have some interesting longitudinal data on it. Essentially, you know, what's, what are the, what are, which out of the following is most important for you to mobilize over the next two years? And is it field and sales force? Is it customer facing activities? Or is it kind of general internal business process? Um, 
a year, uh, sort of a year and a half ago, if I'd showed you this, you would see field and sales force at the top and then customer facing either marketing or service and then general internal business process. Um, Q3 last year, so you know, 12 months ago, was the first um, wave of data we'd seen over the years we've been asking this question where the general internal business process had risen to the top. So this isn't a quirk of you know, sample size or, or, or in the survey data. Um, this is actually held throughout this year as well. So really testament, I think, to companies you know, broadening out their focus, looking beyond traditional low-hanging fruit, looking to address in a more strategic sense a wider subset of workers uh, and looking for, you know, business uh, value uh, impact uh, from their mobile investments in a broader way than we've traditionally seen um, so far. So, you know, good news, I think. I think it's an interesting testament to sort of gradual growing maturity of this, uh, this landscape. Um, when we do research both qual and quant amongst enterprises looking at who maybe is more mature who are the early adopters here we see an interesting set of uh, perspectives around really what mobile means and i think th i think this is an important set of points to make uh, before i go on to talk about what some of the technologies are that align with this kind of new way of thinking about mobility so on the slide that you can see here the sort of le left uh, hand lighter gray boxes is really kind of how we've traditionally thought about enterprise mobility and then the black boxes are those that we see you know characteristic amongst early adopters and companies who are really getting um, their mobile strategy right um, so just to kind of briefly talk through this you know we've, we've traditionally defined enterprise mobility as, as really the mobile of um, the mobility of, of users right so devices in pockets tablets in bags that kind of thing um, it's also really, I think, too much been thought about as just another channel. Um, uh, and also as, you know, from a sort of focus point of view pertaining to devices at the edge, and then, you know, the concept is this linear stack of existing sort of pre-mobile technologies and mobile is just the kind of thing we bolt on on the edge and that's how we think about it. Um, so, you, you know, I, I think this is still in a lot of ways the predominant prevailing view. Um, I think, Although, you know, what we're seeing is um, a slightly you know, different view on this taken by those who are uh, doing really interesting mobile uh, programs, which is, you know, thinking as a starting point of mobility as, you know, the agility of the enterprise. Right. So rather than just thinking about, you know, devices in your employees pockets or your, or your customers pockets and how to get stuff out to them. Really, I think we should be starting from the point of view of how do we make these available technologies allow us as the enterprise to be much more agile and mobile in terms of how we respond to our users' requirements. Um, I think part of that from an architecture point of view is looking at how these available technologies can be used to reimagine business processes. So it's not just mobile as another channel, um, although you know, omni-channel is, is very important to achieve. But I think early adopters are really thinking about how mobile can be used to reimagine business processes in a way where, um, you know, data becomes the center of the business processes and that data is enhanced by the context of mobile users. Um, so, you know, from whether it's product design, product development across supply chain, you know, data becomes the heart of really decisions you need to make rather than thinking about, you know, a new set of devices and endpoints on the edge. And ultimately, I think, you know, as much as we talk about consumerization, consumer, uh, the, the need to deliver consumer grade sort of user experiences, um, completely don't doubt that as a requirement. But really, I think the starting point for the enterprise should be, you know, how do you create a user experience that's palatable to your users, but that can really give you the data and the context to, uh, you know, enhance the value of your data and how you use that value uh, to add uh, additional value in terms of how you're selling your products and services to users. So, you know, if that's the kind of, you know, more appropriate way to think about mobility, what are the kind of technologies and approaches should we look out for um, to align with that view? Um, so really, this is a kind of uh, progression, if you like, from one to four um, of how we see supporting technologies um, evolve to you know help companies think about application development so you know uh, and obviously this is a bit of a generalization but i think the sort of comparative stage is you know is telling us something interesting 
so the first kind of stage, you know, very monolithic applications. This isn't uh, news, obviously, to anyone. Typically defined by very tight proprietary technology stack, heavyweight integration, reliance on custom code, custom programming. Then we sort of moved into the sort of more SOA-based approaches where we began to see a, a sort of uncoupling of the stack. But really, essentially, with those frameworks, what we still had was the reliance on very sort of heavy integration methods and, and still really custom coding. Um, if you kind of fast forward to maybe, um, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, we saw the first generation MEEPs, mobile enterprise application platforms or MADPs that they became known as that, you know, introduced sort of lighter weight ways to think about integration using things like REST and, and SOAP for mobile, introduced sort of the concepts of um, for mobile of, you know, rapid application development, visual studios, that kind of thing. Um, but really, unfortunately, I think replicated what had come before in terms of a tight stack, but on newer mobile and proprietary technologies. So really that model didn't help enterprises scale how they thought about their mobile app strategies. Uh, so, you know, and then we sort of have the phase where I, I think we're sort of entering now, which is a much more modern mobile approaches where we have, you know, looser stack, lightweight integration methods and much more realistic um, sort of object driven rapid application development, uh, which gives companies, you know, more flexibility than uh, they've traditionally had when it comes to thinking about the value they're going to get from their investments. So, you know, one of the interesting things we're seeing with these more modern mobile platforms is that it gives companies you know, more realistic prospects of standardizing on a platform foundation for, you know, if not all their projects, then certainly for more than the pockets of apps that we've traditionally seen mobile app dev tooling uh, used for. Uh, and this is some interesting statistics, I think, to back that up. So we did a, a custom survey amongst enterprise, so actual enterprise uh, users and investors in and deployers of mobile application platform technologies. Uh, we asked them, you know, how many apps did, um, use the platform to develop and deploy to their users, what kind of ROI they were getting from the investment in that platform. And, and the really interesting, but perhaps commonsensical correlation was between the amount of apps and the, and the perceived ROI. So only a third of enterprises deploying five or fewer applications with their platform regardless of whatever that application use case was, say they achieved a very high ROI. For enterprises deploying more than 20 applications, that ROI shot up to 64%, so you know, more than doubled. Um, so, you know, I, I think a testament to, um, you know, companies looking at some of these more modern uh, mobile platform approaches as a way to, uh, you know, think about not just apps here and there to address specific use cases, but how to, use it as a sort of common architecture uh, to think about mobile apps much more widely across broader subsets of uh, uh, mobile workers and across their business units. So um, just before I sort of hand over to, to Emil to talk uh, about some of these issues from a, a kind of progress perspective, just thought I'd wrap up with some thoughts on, uh, you know, what are, what are the kind of new imperatives for, for an enterprise mobile app strategy? Um, so I would say, you know, consider a platform partner that can support agile workflows. Um, it's not going to be applicable to everyone. It, it really does depend on what you're trying to achieve with mobility and what your use cases are, what the business drivers are behind that. Um, but I think certainly we're at a stage where some of these available technologies make it more realistic to think about, um, you know, using a, a platform approach rather than, you know, cobbling together um, lots of sort of disparate technologies. Uh, I would also, though, make sure that you, in the selection of whichever technologies you're using, uh, prioritize those that make available sort of open technologies with more sort of interoperable uh, architectures than we had seen in those early generation mobile app uh, platform approaches. Um, and begin to think about this concept of data as digital inventory. What might that mean for your firm? How do you take context from your mobile users uh, and, and use that to add value to, um, uh, you know, the data that, you know, can then be used to enhance that experience for them? 
and obviously part of that is understanding where you have gaps in data and where you have gaps in, in APIs to enable that. Uh, and then sort of lastly, yeah, it's very difficult to do, but I think sometimes companies sort of over egg what you, what you need to do here. Um, I think you need to measure the business value return on your investments in tooling. Um, you know, that's going to be challenging. ROI is always a difficult thing to try and peg down. Um, but we've seen just even basic metrics uh, put around, um, you know, hours used to do certain lifecycle tasks, uh, you know, with different types of tooling, um, you know, and then all of the usage metrics, um, your ability to get, you know, how many apps out the door compared to how it was previously. So, you know, e even guidelines around the return you're getting from your investment is better than not doing anything and just, you know, assuming that you are or you aren't getting value. So hopefully that's like a bit of food for thought in terms of kind of where we are with mobile at the moment, um, how we're sort of seeing some of the platform technology approaches evolve over time, um, and the kind of things you, you can bear in mind when thinking about evaluating uh, platform technologies going forward. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand over to, to Emil. Thanks, Chris. So I want to uh, quickly reiterate over the problems that we see today on the market. Uh, so just my slides. Yeah, so here there we should be. So uh, what IT faces today is really increasing pressure to deliver a wide variety of mobile applications quickly and cost effectively. These apps can be both external facing consumer applications that target to increase the customer engagement or uh, internal applications to enable and empower employees and partners. ITs are really being challenged to adapt to this highly mobile work style, make fast and effective business decisions, and deliver secure IT solutions in an agile manner. For anyone who has faced the urgency to create a comprehensive mobile solution today, has also faced the challenges and the limitations that are related to it. The variety of stakeholders who need to interact and work with the applications, be that marketers, ITs, developers, sales, and so on, they really push the requirement for more comprehensive enterprise-grade technology to cover the entire organization's needs. Uh, the, the reality of the mobile application development today in a complex enterprise environment is that it really requires a diverse portfolio of front-end and back-end tools and services. You need to choose an enterprise mobility solution that addresses the requirements of the many roles in the company who interact with the application. So let's say that you pick up a solution that handles only the connectivity problems that you face today. Maybe that, that involves some exposing of data from on-premises databases, consume it from a mobile app that enable employees to work while on the go. Tomorrow, what you need probably is to integrate this application with your identity provider, leverage some existing users and permissions. Of course, that may not be part of the point solution. Then you need to distribute this application only within the employees of a given department and assign roles and so on. That, again, will not be part of the point solution and you need to deal with another vendor. So going with a point solution can go as far as affecting your entire organization's potential for growth. So it's really necessary to invest in a solution that offers this flexibility, functionality, and supports the entire enterprise in the long run. Of course, that said, you should uh, be diligent in prioritizing the capabilities that are specific to your business needs and objectives. What we offer as part of Digital Factory today is a complete mobile application development platform with a portfolio of solutions that address the entire mobile application development lifecycle. We enable the organization to go from designing and developing through deploying and analyzing the mobile application will enable you to really address a diverse set of use cases. 
You can build native apps with Angular 2 using our open source NetScape framework. You can extend iOS and Android apps, existing Android and iOS apps, or also uh, build some hybrid apps with Cordova. To build these apps, there is a set of critical capabilities that you should look for if you want to be really efficient and cover uh, all your mobile needs. The first is um, the Visual App Builder. To get started really quickly and deliver a proof of concept or a minimum viable product as Chris mentioned, you can leverage some kind of a visual development approach. You can use pre-designed screen template, connect screens to live data and generate a fully functioning mobile application. This will definitely lower your learning curve, save time to build the proof of concept and enable you to get started very quickly. Next, you really need to think about uh, the developers and the environment that they will work in to build those uh, mobile applications. You can ask yourself a few questions like how productive can I be with this um, vendor? How can I use my own ID, my own development environment? Or am I locked to use their own tool? Do they have a plugin to enable productivity within my own development environment? So uh, if you use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or Eclipse or whatever you use, you need to make sure that um, the vendor really supports your environment. So you are the customer, you know your ID, make sure that the vendor enables you to be effective within your environment. Then you should make sure that the platform supports UI with native look and feel. You need to be able to build beautiful accessible platform native UI. You need to integrate with the device hardware and API and really have a good application performance. With native script, you can define the UI once and let it adapt to run everywhere or tailor the UI to specific devices and screens. And one of the most important capabilities is the, the support for backend services. No matter what connectivity challenges you face today, be sure that the use cases will grow both in diversity and complexity. So on-premises and hybrid connectivity to existing systems of record. Things like uh, your ERP systems or some cloud systems like SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, you name it. You probably want to, your applications to connect to those systems. So think about all the, the, the connectivity use cases that you might have. Uh, that's that could be an ERP system like cloud system, or that could also be some relational database or some non-relational database. Every enterprise has a set of data sources that uh, will need to be made available to the mobile application. So think about those use cases, those data sources, and uh, make sure that the vendor supports uh, connecting your mobile application to those data sources. Also, the chances that you have some APIs, already existing uh, AP, uh, APIs, that you want to reuse from the mobile application. Maybe you currently have a web application or some desktop application or just some system that exposes an, an API that you want this to be accessible also from, from the mobile application. Think about the offline scenarios. How you handle offline synchronization, conflict resolution, and so on. Then another key point, especially for internal applications, is the enterprise security. Look for integration with existing identity providers so you can leverage the user accounts and roles and provide single sign-on, uh, secure, basically secure your application. You also need 
should think about how you secure data while in transit or at rest and learn how the vendor complies to industry security standards. They are really dependent on the, the, indus, the industry you are operating. So depending on your case, you have very different requirements, but uh, standards like SOC 2 or HIPAA are one of the, the, most, the most used ones. And, and then um, think about also multi-channel application. I want to cover two, two capabilities actually here, the content management and the, the customer engagement. So think about those multi-channel apps in advance. How will you engage the audience on any channel and any device? How will you manage this content? How will you share it between web and mobile? How will you target the same audience using a single messaging system. Think about push notifications, in-app messages, web messages, and so on. Just some messages that are event triggered or uh, manually triggered. How do you engage with the audience regardless of the channel? Today with Digital Factory, we can manage the content as part of our content management system and deliver it both on the web and on the mobile device. And finally, think about the developer operation. So how will you distribute the application within your organization or uh, to the public app stores? How will you distribute it for better testing? How will you capture the application usage? Um, how, how will you monitor the, the application performance? How will you analyze crash report? Um, also, how will you gather some user feedback? Another thing that I think Chris mentioned a um, couple of minutes ago is about managing the, app, the application version, managing provisioning profiles, certificates, and, and so on. All these fall into this category and should be um, thought about in advance. Another interesting thing is how you distribute some small changes to the applications when, once they are already published to the app stores. So think of some, um, maybe some content updates or stuff like that. It's really unreasonable to wait for the whole app approval process. So pushing content updates to existing mobile applications without going to the app store resubmission process is also something that you should consider. There are, there are solutions that make, that, uh, make this process much easier and they just don't go to the whole App approval process. So you can immediately push such content updates to, to your wife users. And this is on the capability side. So the vendor should really um, provide tools and services that handle the whole development lifecycle. To, to take that even further and to be even more efficient. You can also think about how you can reuse existing skills and at the same time build the applications on all major platforms. With Digital Factory, today we support capabilities beyond just building smartphone and tablet apps, but also expand to desktop, web, wearables, IoT devices, and so on. From technical perspective, we bet entirely on, on Angular to enable such scenarios. Just recently, with the, with the release of Angular 2, the right ones run everywhere is no longer a myth. And when you combine Angular 2 with native script, you really get a very complete story that allows you to share code that runs natively on the target platforms, be that web, mobile web, or native mobile. So this way, you can reuse code and skills to build applications for each of those deployment targets. Along with it, you get the native performance and speed on web, iOS, Android, and soon on Windows from a single Angular 2 project. Native script will really provide you with an all-inclusive toolkit to build mobile applications with the Angular framework. All combined with the 
probably best possible developer experience. It's really simple uh, to build mobile applications, just as building a web web application, but with all the performance you would expect from native. And with that as a conclusion, to really have a full control, predictability and be successful with your investment in a mobile application development platform, you really need to take a holistic approach and consider all the mobile initiatives. We see that investment in mobility continue to grow significantly in terms of initiatives, budget, headcount, and so on. The internal business process optimization remains the most important thing to mobilize today. Think about and prioritize the capabilities that are really specific to your circumstance and business objectives. Quick and cost-effective delivery won't work with point solution. So make sure that you, you invest in platforms that have everything for your team, including marketers, developers, IT, sales, and so on. And then think about the long term. So create a very comprehensive mobile strategy for the next like 6, 12, 24 months ahead and think about the technical resources you have and the channels that you want to serve. So mobile and mobile web and desktop, these are basically the, the, the channels that you really need to target when building application. And to help you in the, in the process, to help you navigate through all the things you need to consider as part of your mobile strategy, we have prepared a guide that you can download today on the address shown this slide. So with that, I, I pass it over to Corey and kick off the Q&A session. All right, thank you, Chris and Emil. Uh, it's now time to move on to our Q&A session. Um, if you have a question, just click on the question button to submit it. So it looks like we have a question coming in. Our first question is, I think it's for Chris. What questions should I ask when I choose a vendor to execute on my mobile strategy? Yeah, um, good question. Um, I mean, that, that obviously, I guess, depends on what uh, you are looking to do, uh, you know, specifically. But I think there's probably a, a number of broad-based concerns um, across, you know, whatever companies are looking to do, which are which are relevant here in terms of what you should be asking potential uh technology partners um i mean i think first of all you know if we're talking about um you know platforms as a kind of foundation for a kind of app strategy then you know most companies are going to want to uh, have certain uh assurances around the scalability of that investment um, that they'll be making and that can include things like you know ensuring that the underlying technologies are sort of open technologies where there's you know, existing skills within the organization uh, to uh, apply to using the uh, the platform. And, you know, this can often be quite nuanced. You know, there are providers out there who sort of proclaim open technologies, but, you know, in certain aspects, there are, uh, you know, proprietary scripting languages or protocols that are kind of worked in there that, that need to be understood and that place a certain burden in terms of, um, you know, developers learning those to actually, you know, create their apps sort of end to end. So, you know, open technologies is obviously a big one. Um, and then increasingly we're seeing focus on, you know, reusability in terms of application templates, application components, functions. Um, and again, you know, if there, if there aren't those, it's going to place a higher burden uh, on your developers in terms of the value they can, uh, in terms of the kind of learning curve and then the value they can get from it. I guess to put this all another way, how much can you reuse existing skills that you have in your organization to use you know, new technologies you're bringing in? Um, and then another couple of things that, that we've seen important when speaking to enterprises around, around these kind of areas, um, you know, what do companies mean when they mean offline? Because there's sort of true offline and then there's 
sort of partial offline, if you like, and that that could be the topic for a whole whole uh, another discussion. Um, but you, you know, this doesn't just pertain to sort of dedicatedly mobile, you know, road warriors, etc. I think even for knowledge workers, you know, connectivity these days isn't quite as ubiquitous as we might like to think it is. So, you know, how will you, um, how will the technology vendor um, sort of provide offline capabilities for your apps? And then thirdly, I'll just say transparency in pricing. I think this is something that the market is still working through in terms of, you know, giving enterprises real transparency in terms of what they'll be paying for, you know, the technology itself. Um, but then, you know, if an app is scaling up and down, often fairly unpredictable manner, what, what that means in terms of what you'll be paying for the technology supporting that. Um, so, you know, transparency around cost and pricing, I think is a really important one. Um, probably lots of other issues as well, again, dependent on particular enter enterprise context, but I think they're probably some of the bigger ones that we come across. Thanks, Chris. Um, second question here, looks like it can go to uh, both speakers. Um, I have already existing mobile apps. How can I leverage the investments my organization has already made? I can take that one. Um, well. If you have already existing applications like iOS or Android application, then there are, currently there are plenty of cross-platform native mobile uh, application platforms that can be leveraged to continue the, um, um, the development using those tools and just target both platforms. So with native script, what we will allow you to do is just to take an existing um, iOS or Android application and start the development from there. You can start extending this application with new functionality, just adding new features and so on. And this application will be able to target both iOS and Android. So really uh, leveraging your existing investments on, on native applications and continuing with a cross-platform native framework, you'll be able to speed up the development and just um, leverage some some skills like uh, some some web skills that you can use to continue the the development target on both both platforms. Yeah, and just. Uh... I guess to add on top of that, I guess on the, on the back end, you know, if you've already got mobile apps deployed, um, there may well be uh, potential reuse uh, or leveraging of existing identity providers and, you know, ways that you have connected your existing mobile apps into your back end infrastructure, um, you know, connectors and APIs, potentially gateway technologies through which you're providing back end access to resources to those apps. So there would most likely be some kind of infrastructure as well that can obviously be reused for um, for newer applications. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> another question we have is, why should I care about multi-channel apps? I can uh, I, I can have a go at that. Um, I, I guess the, the simple answer to that is we, we don't live in a single device world. We, we actually do some survey uh, work, which I, I didn't show in this presentation, but amongst employees, so not the decision makers, but employees, um, and we asked them what they do on mobile, you know, different types of sort of day-to-day -day work tasks and what they do on their laptops or desktops, depending on what other devices they have. Um, and, you know, there's still a requirement to support uh, multiple device, you know, form factors. You know, we still see with mobile, you know, I think it holds primacy when it comes to, to browsing and, and basic pin related stuff and whether there are specific mobile apps deployed against you know specific business processes and workflows um, maybe they take preference but obviously for sort of hardcore productivity things like you know word processing we still see laptops and desktops as being the preferred devices there um, so that's as relevant from a productivity point of view as it is for a um, you know, customer consumer points of view as well. So, you know, we're seeing in some ways the interesting thing is that mobile is being, re, you know, is being used in interesting ways to rethink some of those tasks that previously, you know, users wouldn't want to, to have done on mobile. But I, I still think, you know, it's going to be a while 
uh, if it is ever going to be the case, I think it's probably not going to be ever going to be the case that you know we are still in a multi-device world, and hence there is always going to be a uh, uh, imperative for companies to support multi-channel apps. Right. Yeah, and to add to that, you want to be where your users are. So if your users want to uh, to work on the mobile, be on the mobile. If they're on the web, be on the web. But you really need to provide efficiency for the whole organization, no matter uh, where they are. And you really need to provide this consistent experience across all channels where which your users use. Thanks, Emil. Um, last question we have, looks like this one is for Emil. Um, how is NativeScript different than Cordova, PhoneGap, or Xamarin? Well, uh, first from, for Cordova and, uh, and PhoneGap, this is really about um, the, the being, being on native. I mean, I mean Cordova and, and PhoneGap really produce hybrid applications. Well, with, with native script, you really produce a real native application that uh, can access the, the device API that can leverage the, the, the native UI of, of the platform. And while comparing to Xamarin, then you, you really need to think about the, the skills your developers have. So because we, uh, we, we we go after the Angular community with native script. We really uh, want to leverage the web skills of your team. So, if you're coming to the, to the from the web world, if you have web skills, uh, or you come from from the Java world, or you come from the from the Microsoft world, um, if you have those JavaScript, HTML5, uh, HTML5 mindset, then native script would be the right choice for you because it will allow you to leverage your existing skills. On the other hand, there are uh, multiple technological um, differences between native script and, and Xamarin uh, that w um, native script will be much better for, for one part of uh, your development life cycle. Uh, Xamarin would be better for uh, for a different part. Um, think about the, the design time experience. Um, so how how easy it will be to uh, during the development and designing of your application, how will easy it will be to preview the changes, uh, how easy it will be to uh, to ship updates to your applications after the the applications are wired. So for example with with Nate script you'll be able to push uh, wife changes without going to that per submission. Why would with Xamarin you won't be able to do that? Um, think what uh, what's your current um, development environment? Whether you develop on Windows uh, or on Mac, uh, with NetScript it might be a bit easier to uh, to build um, iOS applications even if you don't own a Mac because we offer those clouds cloud build. And yeah, there are many more technical questions, but I think from from a higher level, this is why you would use um, one or the other approach. Thank you, Emil. Uh, looks like that's all the time we have today for questions. On behalf of today's presenters, I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, and we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thank you, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, bye.